Hello and welcome everybody to today's webinar where we talk about new collaboration methods that can be implemented with an online whiteboard like Collaboard. Your host today, it's uh, me, Michael, Michael Görög. I'm one of the co-founders of Collaboard. I'm working now for more than six years with online whiteboard technologies, and I helped many customers and organizations all over the world to uh, start improving their collaboration and adapting new methodologies uh, with a solution like Collaboard. Collaboard itself is an online whiteboard developed by the Swiss software company called IPV. It's now a six year old product and um, I'm very happy now to do the demonstration and the webinar today completely in Collaboard. So what is our agenda for today? So first of all, we look at some challenges we have uh, when we talk about the modern workplace and how an online whiteboard can help us to solve these challenges. Then we look at some specific use cases like uh, how to be creative when working together online. So we look at digital creativity methods. Then we check out the use case of hybrid workshops. So after the pandemic, when people are coming back to the office, we see that many of them still enjoy the flexibility to work sometimes from home and sometimes from uh, other locations. So in this case, we are going to face more and more the hybrid scenario. And I will show you how you can implement the hybrid workshop with Collaboard. Then we look at the use case of online trainings and know-how transfer. So we have seen that Collaboard is used a lot by uh, universities and uh, schools all around the world, but also in organizations where at least here in Europe, we have um, the challenge that in some organizations, people will retire soon. So in this case, we need to make sure that the knowledge is uh, shared from one generation to the next one. And an online whiteboard can also help to uh, share this know-how and initiate this know-how transfer. And then as a last point today, we also will look at the data security. So Collaboard is uh, the only whiteboard which is 100% uh, GDPR compliant by hosting the data at the German telecom cloud in, in Germany. And we will explore also the other hosting options Collaboard can offer you. So to reach full compliance regarding data security and data privacy with um, your regulations. So this is our agenda for today. And um, let's look at some challenges for the modern workplace. So we see that people start to expect modern tools. Everything started with smartphones a few years ago and uh, people are expect to have apps for everything. So they like to have also modern tools at work because they have seen it makes them more efficient. It's also more pleasant to use. So we have this uh, workforce who is demanding us to provide uh, modern tools at the, which are then basically part of the, of the modern workplace. Also, we see the demand rising of people wanting to work from home or to implement this hybrid scenario when people are sometimes working in the office or um, from home or other locations for example, a co-working space. And in this whole hybrid scenario, we also see we have this flexibility of the, the location where people are working from. And also we have the flexibility of time. So people expect that they can work um, maybe a little bit later and start um, earlier and then do a longer break in between and so on. So flexibility is something people start to ask more and more for when they think about the modern workplace. So this is something um, where we should think about and also we should have tools that allow them to get this flexibility. Then we will talk about data security, which is also a big challenge, especially for governmental organizations, for insurance companies and many other industries who are dealing with uh, personal data of, of people, for example, or 
organizations doing research, working on patents. So data security is from some industries very, very important. And in this scenario where people work from everywhere and uh, we have these modern tools, all these tools, they need to be checked to fulfill the data security regulations we have in an organization. So this is a big challenge for uh, many of us. And then of course, a tool with a tool is still a, a fool with a tool is still a, a fool. So what we need to do is we also need to make sure that people are leveraging these tools the right way. So they are getting the most out of these tools. So we need to think about training, how to onboard the workforce and how to help people really work with these tools in, in the best way. And to do that, we are going to look now at uh, a first, first use case. So we will look at digital creativity. So I'm clicking here on this button above the blue door and we are jumping to a second part on, on our canvas. And uh, you see now that the picture is here very dark and uh, the font is yellow. This is because of a purpose, because we are going now to turn color board into the dark mode. Now you see it uh, fits, uh, fits much better. So what you can do here, basically that's uh, something I really like. You can choose any color you want for your background. So it could be this, uh, this yellow, this green. So in Colorboard, you're completely free to customize that. You can use the color of your company, uh, your corporate colors or the colors of your customers. And when we think now about digital creativity, I have one thing in mind, and this is the use case of brainstorming. Brainstorming is a very broad term, and there are different activities you can do to, to brainstorm. And today I'm going to show you three specific activities we are leveraging to generate ideas and which you can implement in an easy way with, with an online whiteboard. So first of all, we look at brain writing. When we think about brain writing, the core concept is that we divide the process of generating new ideas and discussing them completely. So in this scenario, we are going to generate the ideas. So let me show you uh, how, how we are doing that. So I prepared here a short template. So we see here on the left, we see we have the brain of Michael with Michael's ideas and we have Nina's ideas and so on. So in this scenario, each participant is a brainstorming, basically in their brain, uh, adding all the ideas and the other people don't really see them. We don't discuss them. And after this phase of brainstorming, we bring all the ideas together. So here in this idea collection, and then we start to, to discuss them. <clears throat> so a simple concept, but it helps us to um, guide the whole uh, creativity process. And by using this uh, online whiteboard, the cool thing here in this case is that uh, you have a very, very broad space. When you look at color board, the whiteboard space is uh, infinite. So people can brainstorm in their own corners and then bring their ideas together, basically directly in the center. So this is one idea I would like to show you. Then another brainstorming activity is called uh, figure storming. And uh, figure storming, the idea is the following. So we try to put ourselves into a specific person. Let's say maybe the CEO or CTO, or we try to be uh, look at the problem from the developer point of view or for the end customer's end of view. So we are trying to put this um, particular view of a person to look at the problem from a different, different perspective. So this is here the idea. So we think about, how would our customer solve this problem? How would our CEO solve this problem? And to give you an idea how this could look like, we have here as well a template. So we see here some, some people, for example, here we have uh, the corner of, of Marie Curie and uh, Marie can now start to um, create here the, the ideas or old group will start creating the ideas on how Marie Curie would solve now this, this issue. And then we go on, we have these uh, four corners, how people will solve these problems. 
and then afterwards in the end we still have the the option to uh, to bring then the um, the ideas to the center the best ones so we see okay this is the main concept how person how this person would solve the problem or or the other one so that's uh, basically the idea of figure storming trying to think about how another person would solve this problem and from this different perspective we benefit basically getting ideas we usually don't get and the third option is uh, called um, star busting so um in this case, we uh, change a little bit the approach of brainstorming. So instead of adding ideas, we start to add answers. Uh, uh, sorry, instead of uh, adding ideas and answers, we, we develop questions. So in this case, we start here uh, adding different questions and uh, using these questions to think about how to, to solve a specific problem. So that's also another approach. And basically everything we have uh, seen here so far, you usually do with, with the notes in Collaboard. So in this case, you start here to um, add the question and so on. So these were three examples on how to do a brainstorming with an online whiteboard. And uh, we are switching now back to, to the light mode of Collaboard and looking at the second use case at the hybrid workshop formats. Maybe let me tell you a little bit more about this picture here. So you see um, I'm here and uh, some other guys. And in this case, we implemented, I think this was five years ago, a hybrid workshop format. You see in the back, there are two big interactive displays. So these are 84 inch display, touch displays, where there are cameras and microphones and everything. And you see some people sitting around in the, in the area. And in this case, the workshop was running like that. We had the online whiteboard running on these two interactive displays. The people we, who were on site working with tablets connecting to the same whiteboard as well. And then we have people from uh, home or other locations who are connected to the whiteboard and the audio and video conference. And then we could basically collaborate together on, on the same whiteboard. And if you look at this uh, hybrid workshop format, we usually <coughs> <coughs> if we look at this um, hybrid workshop formats, we usually have somebody or multiple people who do the facilitation. So these are the people who need to know the technology very well, who these are the people who need to be experts in using the online whiteboards. Then we have the face-to-face -face attendees, which are on-site, and we have the virtual attendees from home, from the co-working space, maybe from the beach or wherever your people are working from. So um, these are basically then connected together using different kinds of technology. And we have seen that in this scenario, it's often like that, that we have an online whiteboard and an audio video conference solution like WebEx, Zoom, Teams, or whatever that helps us um, to facilitate the audio and video stream. And on the online whiteboard, they really start to work together, um, do the real collaboration. And the big advantage here is the following. So when you do it digital, all the content is available from any device everywhere. And also when the workshop ends, you can dynamically continue afterwards. So when you think about the past, so maybe you remember something like that. So this is how we, we made workshop a few years ago when we had all the people on site. We had this uh, brown paper walls. We had here this suitcase with, um, with the pens and all the different cards and notes and colors and so on. And uh, this was great when all the people were on site, but there were still already some problems like you needed to make uh, pictures. So you have like a protocol in pictures and everything was static. And usually when you move these brown paper walls from one room to the other, some of the stickers fell down. So afterwards they changed the position and so on. So although this was working very well, 
in the analog world, it still had some challenges. I think the biggest benefit was that all the people understood immediately how to work that because uh, we all learned working with paper and the pen at school. Maybe now the next generation is so used to working digital that for them is as intuitive as for us uh, working with, um, with an online whiteboard or with a tablet and a pen. So if we look now at some, some use cases, or if we look now on how the online whiteboard is basically replacing this, this suitcase we, uh, we, had, we had here. So um, in this case, we look what can the online whiteboard offer. So here we have, for example, digital notes. So in Colorboard, we have the option now to add notes in, in many different colors. And one of my favorite features is the following. So let's say I don't like this green. So here I have the option to choose any other color or I have this, this color picker, which I can use and basically grab the color from any image or uh, other um, content I uploaded to Colorboard. So make the notes in the color I, I would like to have. So we completely digitized what we have had in the past as physical notes. We use them now digitally. Then we can also add uh, images. So you see here, this is an image I'm moving around. And in Colorboard, it works like this. You can upload an image from your file system. You can take a picture, or you can also uh, use the integrated image search. So you basically search now some images on the web, and then you can add them easily via drag and drop directly to, to your canvas. And this is something we could still do also on, on the real brown paper or on the real whiteboard. We could print the images, bring them there. But um, afterwards, if I need to make an image bigger, it would have been very hard because I need to reprint it, it again. And in our case, we can just make it bigger or smaller. So having images digitally is also a, a big advantage. And you see also one difference while this image here has um, no transparency, it has no back, it has uh, no transparent background. This image here below has a transparent background. This is why it looks more that it almost belongs to the online whiteboard. Then next to images, it's also possible to, to add videos. And this is something we couldn't do anymore in the real world. So when we think now about modern collaboration, uh, videos is something very important. Also, if I look at uh, the younger generation, videos is very omnipresent in their daily life. And um, why not using this also in, in business? So what can we do with, with videos here in this case? In Colorboard, we have the option to, to upload a video from, from our file system. It's also possible to record a video with your camera. So you can leave video statements on the whiteboard. You can record a welcome message for your workshop, or you can record a short comment to an idea or a concept of your colleagues. Or what we have, or we had also customers who started to recording pictures about new ideas and products and putting them together on, on the online whiteboard. We also worked on a YouTube integration. So this means you can search YouTube directly from, from Colorboard. And um, to write it correct. And in this case, you have then the option to um, drag and drop videos from YouTube directly here on the board. And many of our customers are doing that uh, with, uh, with tutorials, for example. Now, the next element we can put to our board are, are shapes. So here in Colorboard, we have like all these uh, standard shapes you've been using, or you have here um, a variety of shapes. Some are more from like the fun area, let's say like the animals, emojis, the plants or the food. But then there are more like say business oriented shapes like process shapes for BPMN process modeling, for example, and so on. So Using these shapes, what I really like is that you can adjust here the color also as well. So let's say we would like to have a check mark in this specific green. 
we can just adjust it beforehand, adding this check mark and uh, start using these shapes. Shapes are something very important because you will see also the templates and everything we created in Colabor, they are based, mostly based on, on the shapes we can add here. Now, what was very easy on the analog whiteboard or on the brown paper was drawing and sketching with the pen because usually you always had a pen when working with these devices. Now, when we work with an online whiteboard, most of the people don't have a pen. So this means uh, leveraging these uh, drawing tools might be quite difficult. It's still possible with the mouse to make a, a straight line or something like that, or to use the highlighter to highlight something. So that's still possible, yeah, but you will not draw or really sketch or write um, using this uh, on a PC where you just have the mouse. But if you are using a tablet or if you have one of these interactive displays where you have a pen, then you can do a lot of cool things and create visualizations for your workshop. And one of the biggest advantages is the following. You do a sketch once, maybe you invest a little bit more time than usual. You make it beautiful and afterwards you can always copy that and uh, you can um, reuse this in, in, other, uh, in on other whiteboards. That's uh, basically something that's uh, very easy to do. Yeah, the last thing I would like to tell you is regarding this hybrid workshop scenario. When doing workshop, usually you uh, use a, a template or a canvas or whatever, while um, in the non-digital world, you usually printed them or you just redraw them for every new workshop. And in this case now, you can leverage all these templates uh, you have here in Colaboard. So we have over 100 templates for different use cases like strategy workshops, um, marketing, planning, and so on. So you can use these templates. And we have just announced a new uh, category called community templates. So we have some uh, very engaged uh, users who started to um, create templates, which we are adding now to our public library. So in case if you have ideas or if you have cool templates, let us know and we can think about adding them as well. But of course, here the idea is that people don't need to start from scratch when working with an online whiteboard or preparing a workshop. They can basically leverage the templates and uh, be much faster in preparing their workshops as well. Yeah, and that's this digital toolkit we have to uh, facilitate the workshops here with, with Colaboard. So moving away from uh, the brown paper bag and this physical suitcase to the digital toolkit for, for this hybrid workshop scenario. Now, the next use case we would like to look at together is the online training and know-how transfer. As I already told you, Colabord is used a lot by schools and universities and also training in, in companies. So it, it's a very nice uh, tool for digital teaching. So all the people can be together on the same whiteboard. You can interact at the same time, but you can also uh, stop the interaction. And it's nice as this online whiteboard usually is infinite in its size. You can map in courses, you can add all the different um, information that are relevant for the people. And what I really like, it's, it's a visual representation. So you don't have all your files and everything in a folder structure where you need to remember the name of the folder, the subfolder and everything. So in this case, um, you have everything presented visually. And for me, this is a big advantage as it makes it uh, much easier. Then when talking about uh, know-how transfer, it's also important that people can work together in a group. So a Colaboard is uh, great to collaborate in a group to share um, information, upload files and everything, and to visualize basically what is in our brain. We can do this uh, directly on the online whiteboard itself. We can also map the learning content. And um, if we have some research results, we can visualize them as well. 
When I was at university, usually I had a big piece of paper and I started to do mind maps and other things to help me memorize what I needed to know for the exams. And this is something I can do one-to-one -one directly with an online whiteboard. And this is one reason why I believe it's such a big help when we talk about the state of, of online training and know-how transfer. But let's look at some specific use cases. So in Colaboard, it is possible to upload documents. So you can import a, a Word file, a PowerPoint file, an Excel, or, or a PDF. And this is great because you don't need to recreate all your content. You can just upload it and reuse it directly on the online whiteboard. You can also share the files with others so they can download it if they, if, if they want. And I brought one example with me on how we are using Colaboard now to work with documents. And um, I will show you that to provide you a little bit an idea. So what you see here, you see a big board with a lot of documents, which we added here. And um, then you see, we also use the highlighter to mark here the, the important, the, the important uh, parts on the document. And there is this picture of the eagle because uh, having all this document now on the whiteboard allows us to take this eagle perspective and look from top on all these documents. And as I said before, for me, it's much easier now to say, oh, okay, this is there and there compared to, okay, it's somewhere in this folder, in this subfolder, and maybe in that file. So that's uh, very, very helpful in, in my case. And as our brain also works more like this than thinking in folders, I believe that's uh, very useful when it's about um, sharing know-how and everything. So you can basically start to upload already um, pre-created content as PDF and, and PowerPoint and reuse them directly on the online whiteboard itself. Another use case as are, is the connect, are connections, for example, to create mind maps. And what you see here is a mind map which we already created. So in this case, I can um, move um, the nodes here around. So everything is glued together. And the concept of Colaboard is I can connect everything with everything. So let's have a look at that. So let's just add a new node and we say it's a, it's a new idea. And now we would like to uh, connect it with, with our mind map. So that's easy to do. We could also do this with, with an image. So let's um, search here again, uh, this image. Okay, here we go, adding an image. And now I can also start to connect the image with, um, with this node here, for example, or with, with the other one. And these connections, which we made now here, they're very powerful because in this case, you see they are, uh, have some curves and everything, but in the end, I can adjust them based on my needs. I can change the color if I like that, if I like to do that. I can also change the size. Maybe I like more something like this because um, when talking about these connections, I can't just do uh, mind maps and concept maps. I can also start to uh, visualize workflows, for example. And when we think about know-how transfer in organizations, the know-how about how a workflow is working is something very important. How are our internal processes is something very important. And I believe if you visualize this on an online whiteboard, it's often easier compared when people need to read a lot of text in a Word file. So maybe a combination of both is, uh, is super useful to uh, make it easier to share this know-how and make it available for other people to falsely understand the, the meaning of, uh, of how things shall, shall work in this case. So in the end, this connection are a really great tool. And with the philosophy of connecting everything with everything, it gives you a maximum of uh, freedom. Now, when we think about especially the case of teaching and training, we might also need some tools to control what's happening on our board. 
And Collaborate is providing a set of facilitator features you can use to steer the attendees and um, make sure the workshop is going the way you want, you want it to go. So for example, there is a timer you can use. You can dynamically adjust it um, based on, on your needs. So this means you can add some time, remove some time, you can stop it. There is a big and red information, hey, the time is running up to make the attendees clear, okay? They need now to, to finish the, the task, for example. Then there is a feature called get attention mode. And as we have heard before, the online whiteboard is infinite in its size. So these boards can grow over time and become very big. So we need features to bring the people to a specific location on the board. And while we had in the real world always the option when we were in the same room to say, hey, look here, we need something similar in, uh, in the digital world. And in the online whiteboard here in Collaboard, it's called the get attention feature. So you can bring all the people to the same location on the board. And in this case, uh, people can immediately interact with the content they, uh, they find there. Then there is a presentation mode. And when you have done a lot of online meetings, and I assume you did, Maybe you were a little bit annoyed after some time without doing interaction, then going back screen share and interaction, screen sharing, and so on. So with the presentation mode in Colorboard, you have the option to um, completely not use screen sharing anymore because when you start the presentation mode, all the other people are following you on the whiteboard and they see exactly what you are doing. So this is something, um, highly useful. And when you're in the presentation mode, nobody can interact. So this means at this moment, people can't interact with, with the content on the board anymore. And we implemented it like that because, as I said before, many of our customers are from schools and universities. And usually when a professor or somebody like that was presenting, he didn't want it that the attendees interacted with, with the content. When we start this presentation mode, we also have the mouse pointer of the presenter visualized to all the attendees, like a virtual laser pointer. And um, with all this feature together, it's, uh, it's really cool because um, you don't need to go to screen sharing anymore. You can do everything directly in Colorboard. Yeah, and the last of the facilitator features is the a voting and the rating option. So let's imagine you're adding a lot of ideas, a lot of tasks directly to the board, and you have a bigger group, and now you want to find out which idea is the best or which concept should be the one that is going into development or whatever. So in this case, you also need a tool to um, facilitate the voting and the rating. And in Colorboard, there is an option where you can use a voting feature so where people can just vote on ideas, you can say how many votes they shall have. And then there is a rating option. So this means people can just rate an idea with uh, one to five st uh, stars. And afterwards the result is calculated. So we can say, okay, this idea has one with uh, five stars and this idea second with 4.5 stars and so on. Yeah, these are these uh, facilitator features. Um, if you are interested to see them in action, then uh, join one of our next webinars where we also show you um, how, how to use them and how to leverage them um, today. This was just an overview, so you know what's uh, included in Colorboard in, in this case. Now, the last point on our agenda was the point about data security. So when we see customers working with an online whiteboard, we see that they are adding personal information, they are adding company secrets, the company strategy, researchers might put their information about their next patent and so on. So we see that the information they put to an online whiteboard is very confident. So we need a very good way to, to secure it. 
And at least here in Europe, we um, should be compliant with the GDPR regulations. And I want to tell you now a little bit how we make it quite easy for our customers with data security, um, because some of our um, things we implement. So in Cola Board, when you invite people to your board, you can do this in two ways. So you can invite registered users. This means these are people who have like a verified email address. And in this case, we collect the data, right? At least we need the email address because otherwise you can't create an account. But if you don't want that, you can have an email address by yourself. So you're the one who is organizing a workshop, but your attendees, they just um, join as guests. And in this case, it's also possible that they uh, participate anonymous. So um, we don't collect any data. We don't know who they are. They can use a fantasy name if they like. So these are the way how people can get to Collaborate. And with these two concepts of register people and guests, we also can be compliant with uh, the data security regulation when it's about not knowing a lot about the users. And the other part is about hosting. So with Colorboard, we offer flexible hosting options. And um, this is also highly related to uh, GDPR. So for example, Colorboard is available in one environment in the Open Telecom Cloud in Germany. So in this case, the data centers are located in Germany and they're also owned by a German company. And this makes it highly attractive because um, issues like the Trends 2 US Cloud Act doesn't really apply as we don't have any US um, company involved in that case. But we also like to work together with uh, companies like Microsoft. So we are providing to some of our users Collaborate hosted at the Microsoft Azure Cloud in, in Switzerland or we also provide um, to some of our users uh, Collaborate hosted in the Microsoft Azure Cloud in, in the Netherlands. And for, for all the organizations and uh, companies who have a non-cloud strategy or who don't want to put the data which they might add into an online whiteboard into the cloud, they have the option for on-premises hosting. So this means they can host Collaborate either on-premises, on their own servers in-house, or Collaborate is so flexible, you can also host it in the cloud of your choice. So maybe you have like a specific cloud provider in your country, which you trust and you like to use. So in this case, it's also possible to host Collaborate in, uh, in, this, uh, in this location. And if you like to learn more about how data security is handled in Collaboard, feel always free to contact us. We have some documents describing security in more details. This was just a high level overview. And uh, these are basically the important things to know how Collaboard make it easy to be compliant with data security regulation because of the flexible hosting options and because of some specific security settings we have uh, directly in the app itself. Now, what could you do next? So we offer free trials of Colorboard. So if, you're, if you haven't used Colorboard so far, feel free to apply for a free trial. In the free trial, you have access to, to all the features. Uh, you can test the facilitator features. Um, you can request this directly from our website. So feel free to do that. In case you have questions regarding data security, uh, regarding features, use cases, or whatever, uh, contact us. So we are um, happy to uh, tell you more about um, Colorboard and how it is used and security. And if you want to deepen your knowledge, then feel free as well to join one of our next webinars. So uh, on our website, you always, uh, you always find next webinar. And the next one is uh, already tomorrow from uh, 4 to 5.30 in the afternoon. And uh, while the webinar today was more providing an overview about Colorboard and this uh, new technology, new methodologies we can use for real-time collaboration, we are going to show you tomorrow 
more about uh, what to do with Collaboard. So it's tips and tricks to work with the application. And it's basically 90 minutes online whiteboard knowledge where you learn about how to use the app. You will see ideas for uh, onboarding exercises, how to uh, create and manage a board and, and things like that. Yes, that was all for today. So thank you very much for attending this uh, webinar where we talked about new collaboration methods with uh, the online whiteboard. And um, I wish you all a great day.